This cilantro beef stew is a typical Peruvian recipe called seco de carne and also often prepared with lamb instead of beef. A belly warming stew with incredibly deep flavor. Seco means dry in Spanish, which is probably the most unfitting name for this stew because it's anything and everything but dry. The cilantro stewing sauce is the best you have ever tried in your life. Let me show you how to make it. First, we're going to peel and finely chop an onion as well as a few cloves of garlic. Once you finish with that, set the onion and garlic aside and add a bunch of cilantro as well as a cup of beef broth to a jar into which your immersion blender fits or you can also use a regular blender for this. Blend the cilantro and beef broth until smooth and no more big chunks of cilantro can be seen anymore. Now preheat a large heavy bottom pan over medium heat and once hot add a drizzle of avocado oil and start browning the stewing beef in it. You will want to brown one and a half pounds of beef in batches, at least four batches. You want to make sure that you don't overcrowd the pan or else steam forms and then the beef just cooks in its own juices instead of searing and that will dry out your beef later. So it's very important that you work in batches. I know it's annoying, but it's very, very important. Brown it for one to two minutes per side or until dark and crusty. Set the beef aside in a bowl and then get back to the stove and add the chopped onion and garlic to the pan and use a wooden spoon to scrape off the burnt bits and pieces from the bottom. If necessary, add a tiny splash of water to deglaze. Saute the onion until lightly brown and then add two tablespoons of ají amarillo paste, a Peruvian chili paste. In the blog post, I go into detail where to get it and what to use if you can't get any. Saute the chili paste for about a minute and then add the browned beef back into the pan and season it with sea salt, pepper, and cumin. Then pour the cilantro broth mix on top as well as half a cup of beer. Don't worry, all the alcohol in the beer will evaporate during the long cooking process. Even if you don't like beer, I highly recommend adding it to the stew. It gives very deep, incredible flavor. Trust me on that one. Give the stew a good stir and ensure all pieces of beef are submerged in the stewing liquid. Reduce the heat to low and make sure the sauce is lightly simmering only. Cover the pot and let your beef stew simmer for anywhere from one to three hours or however long it takes for your beef to become fall apart tender. Yes, even the toughest cuts will eventually become tender if your beef is not tender yet, but you followed all of the tips and tricks that I mentioned before, then it simply needs a little more time. Make sure the heat is very, very low and you let it cook on low for a long time so it becomes very, very tender. After about an hour, you can start using a fork to try and see if it's already tender. And at that point, you're going to want to add one cup of frozen peas. It tastes so, 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 so good. After five minutes, the peas are already defrosted and like finished cooking through. And at this point, you can choose to add a slurry if you want to. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you like your stew creamier and less liquid, then I recommend adding a slurry. For that, you're going to want to remove two, three, four tablespoons of the stewing liquid, add it to a bowl, then add a tablespoon of cornstarch or potato starch, mix it really well, and then return it into the pot. Do not add the cornstarch into the pot directly because it'll just form one big clump and will not thicken your stew. Now serve this over some basmati rice, sprinkle it with a little bit of cilantro and your seco de carne is ready to dig in. I hope you're going to give this recipe a try. If you do, please don't forget to snap a picture and show me. I love seeing when you make any of my recipes and I'll see you with my next video. Bye.